is there a stretch of road that's like nice and clean yeah. and then there's like cities with difficulties in them that you kind of think of as the canonical problem to solve here right uh so starting with the car side um well, Waymo very intentionally picked the Phoenix area mm -hmm. and the San Francisco area as a follow once we hit driverless, where yeah. when you think of consumer transportation and ride sharing you know, kind of economy, a big percentage of that market is captured in the densest cities in the United States. And so really pushing at and solving San Francisco becomes a really huge opportunity yes. and uh, importance. And um and you know, places one dot on kind of like the spectrum of like kind of complexity. Uh, the Phoenix area, starting with Chandler and then like kind of expanding more broadly in the Phoenix uh, metropolitan area, it's uh, I believe the fastest growing city in the U.S. It's a uh, kind of a higher medium sized city, but growing quickly, um, and still captures a really wide range of kind of like complexities. And so, getting to driverless there actually exposes you to a lot of the building blocks you need for the more complicated environments. And so. In a lot of ways, there's a thesis that if you start to kind of place a few of these kind of dots where San Francisco has these types of unique challenges, dense pedestrians, all this like complexity, mm -hmm. especially when you get into the downtown areas and so forth. And Phoenix has like a, a really interesting kind of spectrum of challenges. Maybe, in, you know, other ones like LA kind of add freeway focus and so forth. You start to kind of cover the full set of features that you might expect and it becomes faster and faster if you have the right systems and the right organization to then open up the fifth city and the 10th city and the 20th city. On trucking, there's uh, similar properties where um, obviously there's uniquenesses in freeways when you get into really dense environments. And then uh, the real opportunity uh, to then you know get even more uh, value is to think about how you expand with like some of the service street challenges. But for example, right now we're looking, um, we have a big facility that we're uh, finishing building in Q1 in uh, Dallas area. Um, that'll allow us to do testing from the Dallas area on routes like Dallas to Houston, Dallas to Phoenix, um, going out east. and Dallas to Austin? Uh, Austin, so that triangle. Um, Waymo should come to Austin. <laughs> well, Waymo, the car side, was in Austin for a while. Yes, I know, yeah. but come back. <laughs> yeah, but uh, trucking is actually, Texas is one of the best places to start uh, yeah. because of both volume, regulatory, weather, there's a lot of benefits. Um, on trucking, a huge opportunity is Port of LA going east. So mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, a lot of the work is to start to stitch together a network and converge to Port of LA, where you have the biggest um, port in the United States. Um, and the amount of goods going east from there is pretty tremendous. And then obviously there's, you know, kind of channels everywhere. And then you have extra complexities as you get into like snow and inclement weather and so forth. But um, what's interesting about trucking is every single route segment that you add increases the value of the whole network. Mm -hmm. And so it has this kind of network effect and cumulative yes. effect that's very unique. And so there's all these dimensions that we think about. Um, and so in a lot of ways, Dallas as a really unique hub that opens up a lot of options has become a really valuable lever. So the million questions I could ask you, first of all, <clears throat> you mentioned level four. For people who totally don't know, there's these levels of automation that uh, level four refers to uh, kind of the first step that you could recognize as fully autonomous driving. Level five is really fully autonomous driving. And level four is kind of fully autonomous driving. And then there are specific definitions that, depending on who you ask what that actually means. But for you, what does the level four mean? And you mentioned freeway. Let's say like there's three parts of long haul trucking. Maybe I'm wrong in this, but there's freeway driving, there's like truck stop, and then there's more urban-y type yeah. of area. So which of those do you want to tackle? Which of them do you include under level four? Like, well, how do you think about this problem? What do you focus on? Where's the biggest impact to be had in the short term? Yeah. So. The goal is to, we got, we got to get to market as fast as we can, because the moment you get to market, you just learn so much and it influences everything that you do. And it is, um, uh, I mean, it's one of the experiences that carried over from before is that you add constraints, you figure out the right compromises, you do whatever it takes because getting to market like is so critical, right? And but here uh, with autonomous um, driving, you can get to market in so many different ways. That's too. right. And so one of the simplify simplifications that we intentionally have put on is using what we call transfer hubs, where you can imagine depots uh, that are uh, at the entry points to metropolitan areas, like let's say Dallas, cool. like the hub that we're building, which does a few things that are very valuable. So from a first product standpoint, you can automate transfer hub to transfer hub, and that path from the transfer hub to the you know the full freeway route can be 
a very intentional single route that you can select for the features that you feel you want to handle at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Now, and you build a hub specifically designed for autonomous, for, trucking. for autonomous trucking. And that's what's going to happen, actually. Like, and you got, you need to come out in January and check it out because it's going to be really cool. It's the not only is it our main operating um, headquarters for our fleet there, but it will be the first uh, fully ground up design driverless hub for autonomous driverless that's autonomous awesome. trucks in terms of where do they enter, where do they depart, how do you think about the flow of people, goods, everything. It's like it's quite cool and it's uh, really beautiful on how it's thought through. And so early on, it is totally reasonable to do the last five miles manually to get to the final kind of depot to avoid having to solve the general surface street problem, which is obviously very complex. Now, when the time comes and we are increasingly, well, already we're pushing on some of this, but we will increasingly be pushing on surface street capabilities to build out the value chain to go all the way depot to depot instead of transfer hub to transfer hub. And we have probably the best advantages in the world because of all the Waymo experience mm -hmm. on surface streets. But that's not the highest ROI right now where the highest ROI hub is to hub. hub to hub and get the routes going. And so when you ask what's L4, L4 can be applied to any domain, operating domain or scope, but it's effectively for the places where we say we're ready for autonomous operation. We are 100% operating uh, with, uh, through the as a self-driving truck with no uh, human behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. That is L4 autonomy. And it doesn't mean that you operate in every condition. It doesn't mean you operate on every road, but for a particularly well-defined area, uh, operating conditions, routes, kind of domain, you are fully autonomous. And that's the difference between L4 and L5. And most people would agree that at least any time in the foreseeable future, L5 is just not even really worth thinking about because there's always going to be these extremes. Um, and so it's a race and a, almost like a game where you think of what is the sequence of expanded capabilities that create the most value and teach us the most and create this feedback loop where we're building out and unlocking more and more capability over time. I got to ask you, just curious. So first of all, I have to, when I'm allowed, visit the Dallas facility because it's super cool. It's like robot on the giving and the receiving end. It's the truck is a robot and the the hub is a robot. Yeah, it's got to be very robot friendly. So yeah, that. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I will feel at home. Uh, the what's the sensor suite like on the hub? If you can just high level mention it, is the, does the hub have like lidars and like is is it, is the truck doing most of the intelligence or is the hub also intelligent? Yeah, so most of it will be the truck, and uh, everything is like connected. Like, so we uh, we have our uh, servers where we know exactly where every truck is. We know exactly what's happening at a hub, and so you can imagine like a large backend system that over time starts to manage uh, timings, goods, delivery windows, all these sort of things. And so you don't actually. Uh, need to, um, uh, there might be special cases where that is valuable to equip some sensors um, in the hub, but a majority of the intelligence is going to be on the truck because um, whatever's relevant to the truck, uh, relevant should be seen by the truck and can be relayed um, uh, remotely for any sort of kind of cognizance or decision-making. But there, there's a distinct type of workflow where um, where do you check trucks? Where do you want them to enter? What if there's many operating at once? Where's the staging area to depart? How do you set up the flow of humans and human cars and traffic so that you minimize the interaction between humans and kind of self-driving trucks? Uh, and then how do you even intelligently select the locations of these transfer hubs that are both right really great service locations for a metropolitan area. And there could be, over time, many of them for a metropolitan area, um, while at the same time leaning into um, the path of least resistance to lean into your current capabilities and strengths so that you minimize the amount of work that's necessary to unlock the next kind of big bar.